This is our science lesson for 151. We're studying about plants, God's, God's plan for plants. Here on page 50, we have a sunshine, a cloud, and a plant down here. How do seeds grow? Seeds need sunshine, water. And the water that comes from the sky is rain. Of course, you can go out and water your plants and that is the same water as rain. And they need soil to grow. They need something to plant and the soil has nutrients in it so that they can grow. Okay, the next page we're looking at, it says farmers plant many seeds. It is hard work. Here are some of the things that farmers grow. Let's see. Let's look at this top thing. This one. That's wheat. We make flour for uh, bread and cakes and things like that with, uh, with wheat. They grow green beans, bell peppers, squash, broccoli. Oh. I wonder how many of you like broccoli. I love it. Radishes, carrots. I've seen a lot of you guys bring carrots in for school, for your school snack. I love it. And down here on the very bottom is lettuce. Okay, let's turn the page to our next slide. Now there's many ways that um, seeds get planted. Let's find out. Animals help plant seeds. Squirrels hide nuts in the ground. Do you think they're thinking about, oh, I'm going to hide this and grow a tree? They're not. They're hiding them so that they can have food for the winter. But if they forget about them, they grow into a tree. It's kind of cool. Birds drop seeds. They're just eating the, the fruit. And then the seeds drop. Some seeds seeds stick to a dog's coat. You see that these are called burrs and as they run around soon the seeds drop off. Let's go up to page 53. The wind helps plant seeds. Some seeds have wings. The wind carries them away. And if you've ever been outside and seen little whirly, it looks like a little helicopters coming down. Those are seeds. They just flutter right to the ground. Sometimes they, the wind catches them and they blow quite a ways away. Some seeds have parachutes. I can blow them away. Now these are dandelions. And I'm sure you, you like to go blow those away. And then they float all over the place. Those are kind of cool too. Let's go to the next page. And this is something you can do. We don't color in our book, but um, we can pretend. Okay. We can help plant seeds, but only God can make a seed. You see the little girl and she's watering the plants with a watering can. What do you think this one is? Carrots, that's right. And tomatoes. That looks like maybe it could be green beans or something. And I'm not sure. Maybe corn. That looks like corn. Down here we have a Bible verse. It says, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed. So, herb can mean plant. So this is a, a plant and it's this you they plant the seed and it's going to grow the kind of plant that the seed came from. So if it's corn, they plant the corn. It's not going to grow into an apple tree. It's going to grow into a, a stalk of corn. Same with the carrots. You plant a carrot seed, it's not going to become a radish. It's going to become a carrot. Okay, and that was in Genesis 1, 29. And it says draw draw plants in the garden that could be used to make a salad. Let's just think about that. 
We're not going to color in it, but we can think about it. Okay, we could have lettuce and celery and um, let's see, what else can you put in a salad? Onions. Oh, I'm sure you love onions, right? Maybe not. But there's lots of things. You can put tomatoes, uh, things down here. Oh, I love peas in my salad and, and avocado. I don't know about corn. Once in a while I'll have corn. Carrots, shredded carrots. That's good in a salad. Peppers. I love that. Here's a red onion or a radish. I'm not sure. And broccoli's good in a salad too. So there's lots of things you could put in a salad. Let's go to the next slide. Okay, here are some seeds I can eat. Tomato seeds. Whenever my older girl was um, little, she'd always want me to take the seeds out of a tomato. But that was, that was funny. Um, there's peas. Peas are a seed. And you can eat these peas. These are also a seed planted these they would grow but you can also eat them this corn cob yummy strawberries those little dots on the outside of a strawberry those are seeds peanuts mm, I like peanuts sunflower seeds I don't like the, the shell but I like the sunflower seeds that's our chapter chapter four and we're finishing that and we're going to go on to chapter five we still have a few more pages to do okay let me see now we're going to start learning about God's plan for animals God has a plan for animals just like he has a plan for you God is a plan to take care of each animal no matter how big that's big or no matter how small. Oh, the, that's small chipmunk. Oh, and a snail. Funny looking. That's where their eyes are, I think. And this is even smaller than a snail. This is a ladybug. So it doesn't matter how big or how small. God has a plan to take care of them. Let's go to the next page. Baby animals or animal babies. They're so cute. These animals are born alive. That means they don't aren't from an egg. Their mothers take care of them. This is cute. These are baby cats. Big cats, so tigers. Let's go over here to the next one. Bear cubs must learn how to fish. They don't know how to fish until their mom teaches them. And then there's the lions. The lioness, that's what you call it, a girl or a mama lion. The, a lioness teaches her cubs how to hunt. A doe teaches her fawn to sense danger. Big ears listening. Oh, <laughs> the little ones looks like the mama listening very carefully. And here is a zebra foal must learn how to find water. Wow, lots of stripes there. So stays with mom and learns from what mom's doing. Let's go on to the next page. And this is page 59. These animals hatch from eggs. Their mother takes care of them too. The Mother duck will teach the baby ducks to search for food. No one has to teach them to swim. That is the way God made them. They're so cute and fuzzy. How did this mother bird know how to make her nest? Nest. You know, birds don't usually stick around to, well, they don't know, um, their mom doesn't teach them how to make a nest because when they learn to fly, they're on their own. So they weren't there when the mom built the nest. They just know it. 
And that's what we call instinct. It's something that God gives them. God made her know the right materials to use so that her nest will be safe and strong for her babies. It's pretty interesting. By instinct, a hen knows to keep her chicks safe under her wings. That's pretty special. Oh, they're so cute. Well, that's all we have for our science lesson for this week. We're doing the whole week in one time, one lesson. So on Fridays, we get to do our science. So that is all I have for today. And I will have another lesson for science next Friday. Okay, bye-bye.